Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Tian Wei from Beijing. It's great to be one of my great friends on the stage with all of you. Thank you for coming to today's session, Insight with Yao Chen. Um, the whole session is likely to be in Chinese for our conversation. But at the very beginning, I would use English just to briefly introduce the content of our session and also Yao Chen, who is sitting here with me. Well, she has many titles. There are 78 million Chinese followers of her on Chinese social media. <coughs> Meanwhile, she starred in various TV series and movies, which has won viewership of millions, hundreds of millions in China. But these are not necessarily all about her. One part of her life recently, over the past six years, has a lot to do with the refugee situation in the world. She's been to many parts of the world to look at the situation of the refugees, and she's also been very passionately promoting the cause of protection of the refugees, not only in China, but also in the international community. So in that way, I'm very very honored to be with the Goodwill Ambassador of UNHCR, Yao Chen, to ask her to talk about her story and what she learned from refugees. This session, in order to give you a general idea of what Ms. Yao has been doing over the past few years, let's take a look at a piece of short video. We video. I just want to tell you a story, a story of uh, desperation and sadness, but also of hope after disaster. Uh, there are beginnings and endings of more than 40 million in the world. Uh, we expect to hear from you so that we can share this story. How cute was that boy? That child is At the end of it. Today, um, Chen. Well, today, this is my third time that I participated in three one-day talks on refugees. This morning, um, Christine Lacarte talked about it from the IMF's point of view. This morning, Dr. Schwab uh, talked about refugees uh, with the president of Germany. So today, and right now, we would like to hear from the point of view of a woman from China, and also from the point of view of uh, the goodwill ambassador of UNHCR. Uh, you still remember the shots we saw in the video? Well, it, it was 2004. We were visiting a refugee camp in Syria. It, it, it was a trailer of the documentary. Uh, right, uh, uh, it was refugees in Lebanon, but they were Syrians. How can I talk about this? Uh, refugees are a group, but they are made up of individuals. I'm an individual myself. And I think every year the, my visits are individual to individuals. Indeed, people are watching the issue for refugees. This is the biggest crisis we face now in the world. You've been to Lebanon. I noticed that in your video, you, you held a little child in your arms. You look really, you were smiling. You look like a mother almost. And also towards the, la, the end of the video, that was a child too. Do you remember what it was like at the time? Where did they come from? And uh, did you talk to their parents? What did they say to you about their story? And uh, how did that, those stories make you feel? Well, the, uh, I, what, what struck me most of all these visits is children, because uh, we all think that children are the future of a country. They have these innocent eyes looking at you with kindness, they smile. It, it, it was impossible to imagine that these were children from war, and they were refugees themselves. 
we captured many images with children. In all their eyes, I saw hope. But when you talked to them, their childhood was practically ruined by war. In the video earlier, there was a girl by the name of Laura. I recall our visit to her. She she was very timid. She was hiding behind her mother. But she smiled at us all that time. Then her mother said to me, "In fact, she was a quite an extrovert. Seeing bombs falling in front of her, of her eyes and destroying the village, and also her best friends dying in front of her, then she changed." She became an introvert. Even at night, she would、uh, wake up shouting, yelling from her dreams. She was very scared. Hearing that, I felt heartbroken. She was going to be a happy young girl. She should be, should have been worry-free. But war. Left such wounds. Indeed, in media, we often hear similar stories. There seems to be a commonality between them. In other words, there's something in common between them. These are real events taking place on individuals. It's very different from telling a story afterwards because the, those things change their lives. Children, particularly. The three-year-old child on that beach. When that child died, I think that was the image that moved the world. But the question is, how do we change that? We have sympathy, but then how do we introduce change? I know you、uh, talked to some of the refugees in Lebanon. Where did they live? What was it like when you were visiting them? How did they? Talk to you about how they felt. Did they say they wanted to go home? Last year, because of、uh, security and also UNHCR staff、uh, needed to、uh, deal with about twenty million refugees every day, they were under a lot of pressure. They were not able to accompany us every day. On our visits, and therefore the arrangement was for us to visit some of the refugees that had been settled around cities. Although it was a settlement in name, but their shelter was practically like like just a shelter. Indeed, there weren't even windows installed. That was how they lived, but to them, it was already very good. At least, there was no immediate threat to their lives. Did you have a chance to chat to them? Indeed, we talked quite a lot to them. Was there anyone that、uh, struck you as a particular? Well, including Laura, that I was told, telling you about, because she was very afraid. So I.、Uh, I recalled after our conversation. Well, she she liked drawing, so she drew a little watermelon on my hand, a little fish. So I drew a little cat. I said, "This is my cat. The name is Barton, and this cat will protect you so that you don't need to be afraid anymore." I'm sure she would not want to wash her hand because she wanted to keep the cat. Well, the saddest thing is. Whenever we visit, it seems that we are bringing hopes to them, and their expectation. I feel that it's just just so heavy on my shoulder. For example, after our visit to Laura's family, as we were leaving, Laura was just following us. After we reached the bottom of the stairs, we realized that she had been with us all along. She she just looked at us. I could see tears in her eyes. So I、uh, had another photo taken 
with her. I held her hands and I said to her, I hope we'll be happy one day and be able to return to your home. Did she want to go home? Yes, very much so. In my recollection, no refugees said they didn't want to return home. Uh, also, um, Syrian refugees in Lebanon, I remember uh, meeting this mother. She was pregnant. Uh, she was about to give birth to the sixth child. Five of them ran away with her during war. Her youngest child was still a baby, was just over a month old. And uh, in the shelter they were in, she went to work. And, and it rained, there was short circuit, the shelter caught fire and the baby died in the fire. When we were there, we had a small photo of that baby hang, hanging on the wall, and she told us that was her child. She looked firm, calm, as if she was talking about the past. Perhaps war has wounded hearts already so deeply. Well, in Syria, in history, uh, we've heard about um, uh, Goodwill ambassadors, for example, Angelina Jolie. Oh, she's still there. Oh, yeah, she's still this one. Yes. Well, as ambassadors, you come from culture, society, and economy very different from the refugees. So perhaps to some extent, those differences will have an impact on how you see refugees and how to resolve the problems. So I'd just like to ask you about that. Uh, you've come from Fujian province of China. And after some time, I think uh, you, well, Fujian province is in the south of China. Uh, relatively, it's quite a well-off province. And then you went to Beijing to learn folk dance of China. Then you went to the uh, Beijing Film Academy, the famous one in China. And then you be became a big star of film and TV in China. Many people think. So what is the connection between you and refugees then? In, in other words, this empathy, is it just limited to telling a story? To what extent are we able to change their fate? I think these are the questions uh, many people will have. Well, in uh, films, I play the roles of a refu well, immigrant, uh, but I had no idea of what a refugee was. Uh, what. Yeah, migrant, uh, immigrant, uh, they're different from refugees, indeed. Refugees were forced out of their home. Uh, since I uh, started as an ambassador, it's been six years, nearly, uh, six years ago when they phoned us, uh, asking me to uh, consider becoming their spokesperson. We had no clue at all, really, about refugees, uh, other than what we saw on TVs uh, about refugees in Africa. We thought refugees were the result of famine. During the first year, I visited Manila, Philippines. Uh, we visited the refugees in cities. Uh, they were known as invisible people, even then. I had only a half-hearted understanding, but, but I was deeply touched already. I came into a world that I had known nothing about. During subsequent visits, possibly about three to four years ago, I was even considering quitting. Because in China, it, it was difficult to talk about the issue of refugees within China. Each year I asked myself, what else can I do for them? I feel I've done very little, little, very little for them. But there is one thing I must accept. After visits each year, I've received more strength from them than I 
have given them. Well, this is something interesting. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, in China, if you want to talk about refugee issues and uh, conduct discussions, uh, it's difficult because it's not one of the t uh, priorities in China. But of course, in recent history, China used to have refugees because of war, etc. But in the last few decades, uh, we've not seen anything like that now. So when when you talk to people about your visits to refugee camp, camps, and uh, when you are talking about a nation completely different from China, when you hope your Chinese friends to work together with you to change the fate of the refugees, uh, I, I suppose you probably get this question from many. Why is it that you are bothered? There are so many things in China to do. China at least thinks that it's a developing country, and there are uh, people in poverty in China. There are issues like migrant workers. So you mentioned migrants. So when you are talking to people about these uh, stories about refugees, do you think people understand in China? Some do. Some not really. In fact, uh, today. Uh, I uh, read something written by the press officer who initially contacted me many years ago. He is now working in Turkey. Uh, he, he he said in his note that uh, Yao Chen uh, 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 received many negative comments uh, on behalf of UNHCR because the, the, the challenge was there are so many people who are still hungry in China. Why do you spend your time working in other countries? Uh, of course, people, poor people in China need help, but there are many people working to help them, including me. But to go outside China to work for those refugees, that's not a large number of people. Well, uh, I haven't spoken to you very much. Uh, prior to this uh, session I was talking to you, I uh, mentioned uh, one of my friends said that your spring has come, uh, in brackets, spring in brackets, because people uh, now do watch the issue of refugees, particularly in Iraq and in Syria. Even when I uh, um, uh, chair TV uh, programs, uh, two to three days each week w we'll be talking about refugees. So this means that there's a much higher degree of awareness. And you said also, yeah, people are more aware now. At the same time, it makes you feel rather sad. Although people are watching, but it's sad because it's a crisis. Indeed, I wish there were no refugees. Refugees mean there's war somewhere in the world. Of course, we really hope that uh, everyone lives happily in their own company. I, I wish I was uh, uh, not having to do this one day. That would be a very nice, great vision. Can you? Tell us, uh, how does UNCR work together with you to help refugees? What have you done so far? Well, basically, the main thing is visits each year. Uh, nothing changes that. This year, we'll be going to Pakistan to visit refugees from Afghanistan. So uh, I, I was a little bit hesitant, uh, not for my own sake, but people that come with me each year are all volunteers. They have their own jobs, happy families. There are usually six to seven people. Are they all Chinese? Yes, they are. Uh, some of them are journalists or people that work with me or friends. This year, I was uh, rather hesitant. Uh, twice I said to my team, uh, this year was going to be rather special. I hoped that uh, you would all think about it. Uh, you could say no now. But the interesting thing is that I sent these messages out twice, but I, I had no response. So I'm very touched, uh, and I feel indeed 
uh, I feel the pressure because this is like uh, you are going with several lives in your hands because they, they didn't respond to my request. Therefore, they were all coming. Well, when you publicize these stories on Sina microblog, Weibo, 78 million people watch it following you. What do they comment? Well, those comments change over time, too. The first year, it was mostly uh, negative, questioning me, saying about the same thing. We have so many refugees in China. Why don't you work in China? Why do you need to use other people? Well, not refugees. There's just people in China that need help. Oh, indeed. Well, at the time, people didn't see the difference between refugees and people needing help. So uh, we often replied to these postings and comments one by one to tell them what's the difference between refugees and people that need help. Gradually, I think uh, starting from our visit to Africa, that was quite a turning point. I started to notice that the comments changed. About half of the people were questioning me. The other half were encouraging me. Some even helped me to respond to those people that didn't understand the issue of a refugee. That change was uh, a great surprise to us. Well, just to tell you, uh, uh, Weibo is rather like a Facebook in China. The year before, we uh, did some work on Baidu's uh, search engine. We, we, we saw UNHCE rank number four in the top 100 search words. This was unimaginable before then. The, our team and the UNHCR people were really happy. Oh, they said that they found the right person to do the job. Oh, yeah. Because prior to this, in China, nobody thought about the issue of refugees. And nobody wanted to know, really. Well, I think uh, this is perhaps a, is a transition for you too, because in in the work you did before, you were martial artist in a comedy, because uh, you were a kind of uh, 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 quite a, quite a lot of this uh, fighting for justice, and then it was a TV soap. Uh, it was uh, undercover a communist party member. How to collect uh, intelligence? All the rest of it. Now, those images are very different from the person you are now, looking after refugees. So people need to see you differently, right? Uh, seeing you from uh, the screen down to the reality. Well, indeed, uh, when, since you talked about it, uh, well, th there, is, there is some uh, uh, threat there. Because when I was young, I wanted to be a policewoman. In my bone, perhaps in my blood, I always wanted to do something for other people. Uh, I, I, I always feel that I can't stand injustice. And I, uh, that part of me perhaps uh, uh, come across uh, from time to time in Weibo. So sometimes, uh, although it looks like coincidence, but it very f often it is actually, actually a, a choice you made subconsciously. I think you are rather like me, perhaps. Uh, so every day, we watch refugees, whether it's uh, uh, media in China or when we travel around the world, we uh, come across a lot of things about refugees. So I'm just wondering now, as the goodwill ambassador of UNHCR, you are th talking and working with people that think about this uh, on a daily basis, and also those people who live and work with refugees. When you see the news, how do you feel? Well, I have several angles here. Number one, uh, from the point of view of a goodwill ambassador. Secondly, from the point of view of a woman. And thirdly, from the point of view of an artist. Because the artists uh, are usually quite exposed to emotional impact. Uh, a lot of goodness in there. So there are different angles here. Today, what's happening to refugees? What does that mean to you? in all these three ways. Well, I used to think these things were very far away from me, but each year, each visit makes me feel that I'm closer to them. They are flesh and blood just like me. They have their own stories. They used to have their own lives. They would like to have what you, you, you often have. Uh, oh, they, they have worries too, but, but all these things are ruined by war. 
I think visits in the last couple of years have really made me feel how they feel. Uh, coming back from Lebanon, I had a dream in the afternoon. I, 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 in my dream, I went down to the supermarket downstairs. Uh, upon my return, I, uh, oh, you often buy things from the supermarket downstairs. Oh, really? Well, this is a big news. It's going to be to your fans. Well, OK, just a joke. So uh, uh, when I returned, I found that my home was bombed to pieces. It was just in a sunny afternoon. It was smoke everywhere. And there were helicopters in the sky. People were running, scattering. And uh, I was pushed forward by the crowds. I didn't know where my family members were. And uh, we hid ourselves in the ruins. Uh, we were hungry. We were thirsty. And there, I really missed my home, my family. And the great life of green grass and sun and children. So I started crying, and, and I woke up crying. I thought, it was just a dream. Then I immediately thought, that was exactly what those refugees had gone through. So I cried even more. That was when you felt rather powerless. Uh, after visiting uh, Afghan refugees in uh, Pakistan, we visited a school, met many children. We shouldn't just feel p powerless. We need to find a solution. Perhaps they do already. Yeah. This time, I feel deeply touched because at several schools, I asked those children, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was very surprised. Many of them had the same answer. They wanted to be the, in the military, whether it was a boy or a girl. Only this small, all that. Rather like you wanted to be a policeman? No, I don't think it's the same idea. I asked a local uh, uh, teacher, Akila. Uh, she's the uh, winner of a uh, Nathan Refugee Prize. I asked her why. She said, The situation in, uh, in Afghanistan is such that it's been war for 35 years. The longest lasting refugee issue. Pakistan is not stable. So in the heart of these children, being a soldier, you'll be able to defend your country and to resolve all problems and to stop war, to protect families. Indeed, they. They said that uh, every day they were talking about war, every day. Children asked teachers every day, why are we here? Why are we so poor? Why do we not have anything? Why can't our country be as beautiful as what we see on TV? Why can't we return to our home? They asked the same question every day. What was the answer from teachers? The teachers said, we need to learn knowledge, because in their eye, knowledge is more powerful than weapons. On that, I can't help wanting to talk about Akila. During our visit in pa Pakistan, she had my respect. I consider her as a friend. I can feel the connection between us. She said, when a country is invaded, education is the first to go, because education is the future of this country. So to her, she very much, very much hoped that uh, children in Afghanistan would receive education that was how they would be able to rebuild their country. Akila is a great woman. She's a refugee herself. More than 20 years ago, she and her husband and family ran from uh, Afghanistan to uh, Pakistan. She used to be from a middle class family. She used to be a teacher. Now she's penniless. Her life depended on grants 
from the local government and aids from UNHCR. One day, she saw many girls playing, uh, doing nothing. So she asked them, why aren't you at school? The girls said, no one ever said to us we could go to a school. Because in Afghanistan, in some tribes, they were very conservative. Women, for centuries, had no education. Akila changed that. She went door to door, talking to each family, persuading them to send their girls to school. To date, she's taught more than a thousand girls. Because girls marry early in Afghanistan, and they have their children, and these girls uh, send their children to Akila's school. It's great, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, indeed. She's nominated as uh, International Teacher of the Year. I, I can feel that you're almost a sister, so you, you talk about her more fluently than you do yourself. Well, we have very limited time today, and our topic is very ext extensive. It's about refugees. In fact, they are all one of us. I know it's not just in Asia, but also in Europe, in America, there are similar debates. Sh how should we deal with this? What's the relationship between us and refugees and our values and reality? How do we balance the two? What can the government do? People of the country, how do they protect their lives at the same time, reaching out to the refugees? These are all the things we are thinking about. We hope Yao Cheng's stories have helped us think and help us to understand refugees more. So we thank Yao Cheng for sharing the stories with us, such genuine stories. Thank you.